coming to you live from our studios here at MS24. Welcome to MS Breaks. My name is Kwabna Amiya. Now coming up, Ghana's economy poised to record significant growth after contraction in the second quarter of 2020. Also coming up, first Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Maswalo Pokwafaro, debunks claims of government interference at the Central Bank. Now to the details, first Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Maswalo Pokwafaro, says four key sectors will drive Ghana's economic recovery post-COVID-19. Now, despite the Ghanaian economy recording a contraction of 3.2% in the second quarter of 2020, Dr. Pokwafai was optimistic of positive growth in the third quarter of 2020. Now, speaking on MS24's flagship business program, Spotlight, Dr. Pokwafai stressed that the agriculture, services, manufacturing, and construction sectors will drive Ghana's economic rebound. It is pointing to what we will call a V-shaped recovery. Okay. Because the significant negative impact and the, we expected the lockdown and the restrictions to be prolonged over a period of time, but you saw that there was a gradual lifting of those restrictions. Uh, it meant that the impact on economic activity had not been as severe, even though the contraction. And zero, negative 3.2 is not a small contraction. Yeah, yeah. But to have a turnaround in the third quarter into a positive territory shows that the recovery is going to be more of a V-shape than a U or a trapezoid. Having said that, though, to seen to address your question, to drive this recovery, we've seen a rebound again in the services sector. Okay. And then also seen a rebound in construction, manufacturing okay. sector, and our Greek. So these are the four key sectors that we've seen okay. as the sectors that will be driving. Now, still on the same program, first Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Masolo Pokwafari, has refuted claims that the government interferes in the operations of the central bank. Now, according to Dr. Opokwafari, the operational independence of the central bank, which has been guaranteed under the BOG Act, leaves no room for any form of interference. And that, there's that perception, because that's really not what is on the ground, actually. Uh, the Bank of Ghana Act has amended in 2016, and it was the same in the Bank of Ghana Act that was introduced in 2002. Yeah. It was the, uh, granted operational independence to the central bank. Clearly, operational independence doesn't mean that you're operating an island, yeah. right? Operational independence means that your tools of monetary policy, the conduct of policy, and other things, you are operationally independent in the sense that you are not detected to by any other authority or individual. And that's clearly stated in the Bank of Ghana Act. It also goes on to then clearly sign, uh, single out that the primary mandate of the central bank is price stability. And that should not be subordinated to any other objective of the central bank. And in the conduct of that policy, we should not uh, subject, we, you, you are not subjected to any authority or individual in the conduct of that. And you will see that in, in, in the conduct of our monetary policy operations, we have an independent body within the central bank called the Monetary Policy Committee, committee. chaired by the governor. The two deputies are members of the committee. The governor of the central bank is an economic advisor to the government. Yeah. So then that's where you see that operationally we are independent. We are not subjected to any other person uh, dictating to you as to what to do. Clearly, nobody dictates to the central bank in terms of printing money. I'm in charge of currency management, yeah. and nobody has ever told me as to when to print money, and how <laughs> yeah. to print money, and what amount. We have a framework that determines the, uh, the currency in circulation. And Still on Dr. Opoku Afari, he says Ghana can pride itself as the only country in sub-Saharan Africa to achieve full interoperability. Now, the deputy governor stressed that this development is crucial in promoting financial inclusion. System to give to have a centralized place to have a common platform because prior to that we had different banks having their own switches and they were not communicating to each other. By putting all of them together, it liberalized and opened up the payment uh, system architecture for that. And then from there, we've built on that gradually until the new Payment Systems and Services Act was passed, which was an amendment or a complete. Uh, uh, repeal of the old Payment Systems Act. Okay. The difference is there was a Payment Systems Act. Now we have Payment Systems and Services Act. Okay. And so the Payment Systems and Services Act now creates room for the central bank to bring in the fintechs and directly license them and supervise them. Okay. We are doing that in a carefully balanced way 
to ensure that they are not constrained to be innovative. So there is a way to have supervision, but at the same time, flexibility to be innovative and striking a good balance to promoting financial inclusion and financial stability. So that's what the new Payment Systems and Services Act has introduced. And on that, we've been able to introduce what we call interoperability. And all that means is that prior to that, those who belong to MTN, MTN. could not transfer across to Airtel to go to Vodacast. We've been able to achieve that, but we did not end there. We've now been able to move that to be able to move it from there to your bank account. Okay. And then we did not add there, we were able to be able to move that to move it to the e-switch card account, which is the biometric card that was introduced in 2007, 2008. So we have this triangular interoperability, which makes Ghana the only country in South Saharan Africa that has access. Well, that's it for today's edition of MS Breaks. My name is Kwabina Ameyao. Keep watching MS24.